Lord this morning. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord? Can we get excited for the things that God has in store for us and for the opportunity that we have that we get to praise His name? Amen. Come on, hand out with your hands while we praise the Lord this morning. Let's raise our voice and worship our God. I'll praise Him the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. It's praises to all.
next song we're going to do is from Matthew and God's when Jesus says those who hear my word are like those who build their house on a solid ground when the storms come they won't be shaken so let's declare that together father God we pray that God that we would be like that God when the storms come God we build our lives on your word God let us hear and receive in this place today God God we build our lives on you King Jesus Praise you, God. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he No. 
rises, God, we stand firmly on your word, firmly on your love, oh God. God, we build our lives, we build our homes, God, around you and your promises and your truth. God, we trust you, God. We know that everything works together for the good of those of the Lord, God. So we trust you today, God, trusting that in whatever we're walking through, God, you're making us more like you, God. God, you're drawing us closer to your heart, God, in every season. God, we trust you. We put our trust back in you today, God. If we've moved back, God, we put our trust back in you, Jesus, God, because you're worthy of it, God. Let's sing this out. I through generations, God. God, today we trust you in this moment, God, and we trust you with our future, God, because you're already there, God. King Jesus, we give you all the glory and all the honor, and it's in Jesus' mighty, mighty name that we pray together and we say amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some more praise this morning. Amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. If you're here in person, you can go ahead and find your seat. If you're connecting online, thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Well, good morning. 
We, uh, man, we are excited. I don't know about you. I think the parents are more excited today because it's back to school week this week. Can I get an amen, parents? Yes. Sorry, kids. Hate to do it to y'all, but. Well, thank you all for being here. I'm George, and I'm one of the pastors here. And gosh, we are so glad that you are here, whether you're in person or online. Thank you so much for being here. We want to continue this time of praise and worship. We don't want it to end, okay? So this time, you know, we, we want to praise and worship him with the giving of our tithes and offerings. And as you're getting that together, as you're, as you're praying about that, I, I, I heard a story this past week and just really, really got me because I don't know about you. Sometimes I feel like it is what I do for my kids, for my wife, for people, is what I give, is anything, is it really enough has anybody else ever felt that is this really enough and if you do you're not alone but the story that i heard it, it was about a pastor and he had walked into a store and went up to the register and he noticed that the people in front of him did not have enough money to pay for what they were buying so he quietly went up behind the man and said hey listen take this you don't have to look at me but i just want you to have this so he, he went on with his day and everything, and several years later, he, he was invited to speak at a church. And so he spoke and everything, and afterwards, there's a, there's a man that came up to him and said, hey, listen, I want to share with you how I came to faith in Jesus. He's like, okay, great. He goes, nine years ago, my wife and I had lost everything, our jobs, money, our home, we had lost all hope to the point where they felt that they could not live anymore. They wanted to end it all. So on their way to do whatever they were planning to do, they stopped at the store and said, hey, listen, let's at least give our son, they had a little boy at the time, our son something to eat. So they got to the store and, in, and they realized when they got to the register that they did not have enough money. He goes, and then suddenly, this hand tapped me in the back and put something in my hand. And I remember what he said. He said, Jesus loves you. And he never saw that man again. Later on, they went to go park somewhere and they were weeping and crying and crying out to God. On their way out of there, they looked over across the street. There was a church there and the sign outside the church said, Jesus loves you so they went to church that Sunday it doesn't end there they went to church that Sunday both him and his wife got saved and he said you're the man that gave me that money because I recognize your voice because the pastor was from South Africa and had a distinct voice and accent he goes I know it was you he goes and I want to tell you that simple gesture that you thought was simple Save the lives of three people that day. So we have the opportunity. We may not be at the convenience store handing somebody money, maybe or maybe not, but we have the opportunity to give of what we want, of, of, of what we can, and we thank God for multiplying it and taking it to beyond what we'll ever see or imagine because together we are truly better. Amen? And let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you take what we think is simple, is little, Lord. But thank you for reminders like that story, Lord, where you can take what we give out of, out of faith, out of obedience, and you can multiply it, Lord, to reach one more marriage, one more child, one more family who maybe have found the end of the rope of hope, Lord. So thank you for continuing to work in us, through us, and for us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the fact that we get to gather in your name, Lord, and give it all to you, Lord. Because once again, Lord, we are truly better together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Good morning, GSEC. We are so excited that you're able to join us for our Sunday service. We want to welcome all of our guests this morning. If this is your first time joining us, let us know by scanning the QR code located behind every seat. If you're joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. 
You'll be redirected to fill out our online connect card. We would love to get to know you and stay connected with you. Help us impact the lives of students and families at Benavides Elementary with our Operation Blessing Back to School Drive. Next Sunday is the last day to bring in school supplies to place in the collection box in the lobby. You can also make a monetary donation in any amount to help GSCC purchase school supplies by giving to Operation Blessing online at gsccconnect.com or by dropping your donation marked Operation Blessing in one of the offering containers located at the sanctuary exits. We are blessed to be a blessing. GSEC Connect Groups presents Coffee and Connect. Join us Wednesday, August 21st at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Grab a cup of coffee, meet the Connect Group leaders, learn about all the groups, get your questions answered, and sign up for a Connect Group. The start of the Connect Group semester is Wednesday, August 28th. Make sure to register for a group. The Next Gen Ministry has you covered every Wednesday night this Connect Group semester. While you attend your Connect Group, children birth through fifth grade can join us for Kids Connect starting August 21st, and students in sixth through 12th grade can join us every week for youth service. Kids Connect and youth meet here at GSEC every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Doors open at 6 p.m. for check-in. Get the whole family connected this semester. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at GSEC. Amen. Well, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. So glad to be here with all of you. So thankful for those of you who connect with us online. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord together. Amen. 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 Well, I know Pastor George mentioned just briefly, we are in back to school season, back to school mode. Parents, I know you're excited. Teachers, I know you're probably a little bit less excited. But nevertheless, here we are, amen? Amen, I wanna just remind you and encourage you again, we have this Sunday and next Sunday will be the last opportunity that we have to, to sow into our Operation Blessing School Supply Drive. And so wanna make sure uh, to, to make you aware of that you still have time to sow into that. We are blessed again to be a blessing to sow into our community. And so uh, if you're able to wanna encourage you to take the time to, to pray and ask the Lord how, how you can get involved with Operation Blessing, especially as we, uh, enter the school year. I also want to take time this morning to just thank those of you who serve in our schools. If you're here today and you work in education, you're here and you work in any of the, the schools in, in our area, and would you do me a favor? Would you just stand to your feet? We want to just take a moment to recognize you, to acknowledge you, to honor you. Any teachers, administration, any way that you serve in schools, thank you so much. Come on, can we just thank the Lord for them? We're so thankful for you grateful for the investment that you make in the lives of our kids. If you'll stay standing, we have a gift that we want to give to you, and then I want to take a moment to just pray with you. So if you just stay standing for just a moment longer, I don't, I don't want to embarrass you. I know some of you are like, oh, please don't draw attention to me. We, but we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. And, and a couple of points for all of us. Listen, as we're sending our, our, our kids to school, I want us to pray these things for, for those who are working in the schools. We want to pray for strength and energy for the teachers, for the, for the staff, for, for everybody that's a part of that. We wanna pray for wisdom and discernment. We wanna pray for health and safety. We wanna pray for inspiration and creativity, for positive relationships, and we wanna pray for their emotional well-being. We, I want you to know that we love you, we're praying for you. I know that the gift we give you is just a small token of appreciation, but hopefully as you take that and you have it, that you, you will be reminded throughout the weeks and throughout the months that somebody's praying for you. So let's do that right now. Let's just extend our hands, if you would, and just pray. Lord, we thank you so much for those, oh God, who you have called, who you have appointed, oh God, to be teachers, to be principals, to be administrators and leaders, to be those that are, that are, that are serving our kids in so many different ways, oh God. Lord, would you be with them this school year, oh God? Would you be their protection, their provision, their promise, and their peace, oh God? I pray that they would carry your presence with them into the schools, oh God. They would be light in the darkness, oh God. They would be a, a beacon of hope, oh God, Lord, that they would, they would uh, Lord, shine 
Oh God, with, with, with your radiance, oh God, with your glory, with your spirit, oh God, that you would use them in a mighty way, oh God, to speak into the lives of students, oh God, that you would use them to be a positive influence, oh God, on those that are around them, oh God, both students and, and co-workers and all who are there, oh God, we pray that you would just be with them, oh God, we pray that this school year, oh God, would be a year of tremendous growth, oh God, we pray that this, this school year would be, a, Lord, a significant year, oh God, for them, oh God, as they continue to step into their, the plans and the purposes that you have for them, oh God, and I pray that the Lord in those times in those seasons where they feel frustrated, oh God, when they feel uh, sad, oh God, or, or alone or disappointed or when, when they're struggling, oh God, Lord, that they would know, oh God, that you love them, oh God, that you are, are for them, oh God, and that, that Lord, that, that they have a church, oh God, that is standing with them and praying, oh God, believing that what they do truly does matter, oh God. So we stand with them, we lift them up, oh God, and we ask that you would be with them this school year. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord one more time for all those that are serving in our schools? God bless you. And again, thank you so much for all that you do. Well, there is a lot going on this time of year. There's a lot going on in the church. And, and I want us to continue in our series that we began last week, Better Together, as we continue to talk about the, the importance, the significance of connect groups. For those of you who, who may not know, we're in the middle right now. We just began, actually. Today is the very first week of what we call Connect Weeks. So over the next three weeks, we are going to spend time really, really encouraging you to sign up to get involved in the Connect Group ministry here at Good Shepherd Community Church. That's our small groups that meet all throughout the city, all throughout the county. We have groups that, that are meeting, and they cover a, a variety of different topics. But I want you to know that there is a group for you. We have 40 plus groups this semester that you can sign up for, get involved in, and, and they range from a variety of different topics, different times, different meeting places. We're going to have groups that, that deal with uh, parenting, with marriage, with uh, family, with finances, with so many different things. And so I want you to know that, that again, we can't do everything that we want to do and everything that's in our hearts to do as far as discipleship is concerned on a Sunday morning alone. That our faith requires much more than just a Sunday morning focus or attention, but that connect groups give us an opportunity to focus on our faith all throughout the week, to grow, to learn, to get closer to God. Again, connect groups are there so that we can connect with God as we connect with each other and then we have opportunities to connect with those separated from God. So I wanna encourage you, over the next few weeks, you're gonna see more and more information about Connect Groups and you'll have more and more opportunities to sign up and connect. I also wanna invite you to our Coffee and Connect event. Again, what an incredible time we've had the last few semesters that we've done this. Uh, don't eat before you show up to Coffee and Connect because some of these groups throw down. I mean, there is good food, there is snacks, there's sweets, there's. Come hungry physically, come hungry spiritually, and I believe that that'll be a blessing to you as you show up for, for Coffee and Connect. I did want to just take a moment, and I think we have a QR code that I just want to share with you. So if you want to, you can take out your phones this morning, you can scan this QR code, and this, this will give you a list of the Connect groups that are available as you prayerfully consider which groups that, that you may uh, want to sign up for. And so take a moment, you can scan this QR code, you can, you can save it for later. Also, if you see anybody wearing one of these shirts, anybody that's wearing a shirt that says Connect on it like this this morning, would love the opportunity to help you sign up for a Connect group. They'd love to answer any questions that you may have about Connect groups. We, we're here, we're available to, to serve you. We wanna make sure that you find a place where you can plug in. Because we, we know, again, there's so much importance to Connect Groups. We so value what we do in and through Connect Groups because we truly believe that we're better together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, last week as we began this series, we talked about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And in that passage of Scripture, we see that the church was being compared to a physical body. And just like a physical body is made up of many different members with different roles and different functions, so is the church. That's how God designed the church to operate. We each have an important part to play as we fulfill our assignments, as we're working together for the good of the whole body, the body of Christ. Over the next few weeks, so I, I want to spend some time talking about what are some of the specific benefits 
that we receive through community, through walking and connecting together in, in these groups. We're gonna begin today by looking in God's word and seeing what God's word has to say about wisdom through community, wisdom through connecting with one another. So as we do that this morning, we're gonna be in Proverbs uh, quite a bit, but we're gonna begin in Proverbs chapter three. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Proverbs chapter three and we'll begin in verse 13. But before we do that, I just wanna take a moment to pray. So Lord, we love you so much. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this day. Lord, we take time to just worship you, Lord, to acknowledge that, that you are holy, you are righteous, you are faithful, you are good. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh God. We dedicate this time, this day, to you, oh God. And we ask, Lord, that as we, we dig into your word, oh God, that we would read your word, we would receive your word, and we would respond to your word, oh God, in a way that would be beneficial, oh God, to, to our, our, our lives, to our growth, oh God. Would you feed us this morning, oh God, as we, we read your word, oh God. Would your word speak loudly and clearly, oh God, and would we allow your word to, to uh, impact our lives, oh God, in such a way that we would grow, oh God. We would grow spiritually, we would grow closer to you, oh God. We commit this time to you, O oh God. I ask that you would open up our, our ears to hear, O oh God, and our hearts and our minds to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Proverbs chapter three, beginning in verse 13, it says, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For, to, for the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. I think we can all agree that wisdom is a good thing to have, right? We all should have a desire to have more wisdom. By the way, how many of you have all the wisdom that you ever could need or want? Very few of us, hopefully none of us, right? We can all learn more, we can all grow more, we can all gain and grow in our understanding of God and of God's word and, and how, to, how to live a godly life. And so well, wisdom is a blessing. This proverb says, in fact, that wisdom is more of a blessing than many of the other things that we consider to be blessings. It says more than, more than silver, more than all of the wealth, more than all, all the things that we think about. When, I, when we think about blessing, we can't help ourselves. I can't help myself sometimes. When, when you think about blessing, our natural tendency is to think money, is to think resources, is to think position, but blessing is so much more than that, and the Word of God says that wisdom is one of the greatest blessings that we can receive. Wisdom is, is so important, it shows up so many times in Scripture, in the New King James Version of the Bible, that word wisdom shows up 227 times, 227 times in the New Testament, I mean in the New King James Version of the Bible. In the book of Proverbs alone, Wisdom is mentioned over 50 times. It has a lot to say. The Bible has a lot to say about wisdom. Again, wisdom, it's better, it says in this passage of Scripture, the gain from wisdom is better than gain from anything else we can acquire, right? It's one of the greatest blessings. How many of you want to be blessed? We all do. Wisdom is one of the greatest blessings that we can receive. So how then, how then do we gain wisdom? Proverbs, again, has so much to say about wisdom and how to gain wisdom, and much of what it says points to the importance and the connection between wisdom and being connected with one another. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Again, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, who, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. This proverb is really, really straightforward. It's pretty simple. The Bible says that who we spend our time with matters. 
Who are we around? Who are we allowing to speak into our lives? Who are we allowing to invest in our lives? Who are the people that we're, we're spending our time with? What are we doing? Where are we going with them? Because who we spend our time with is really, really important. It says that when you spend time around the wise, then guess what happens? You gain wisdom. But it says, when you're the companion of fools, you will suffer harm. I'm sure we all have stories that we could tell where we say, man, I really wish I hadn't have hung out with that person on this day. You know, man, I, and sometimes you can say somebody's name. I was hanging out with this person, and somebody said, man, what happened? Some people just kind of have that reputation, right? When, it, the Bible says when you hang out, when you're a companion of fools, you'll suffer harm. But whoever walks with the wise will become wise. Who we're spending our time with and how we're spending our time, it matters. I want you to think about a seed. A seed, a teeny tiny seed can have all the potential that it needs to grow. It could have all the potential in the world to grow into a great and mighty tree, to grow into a, a, a beautiful plant. But a, but a seed needs to be put in the right environment to grow. You see, I can take, I can take a seed and put it in a cup of clay and throw it in, in a dark room, in a dark closet, and it's not gonna grow. It's gonna die. There's, there's gonna be no life. There. But a seed put in the right environment, a seed put in, in good soil, the Bible talks about, a seed that's in a place where, where there's rain, where there's the, the, the sun, where it has everything that it needs to grow, will grow. Where, where, where we are and who we're spending time with matters. If we want to grow in our faith and our walk with the Lord, then we need to examine our environment. All of us. Where, where am I spending my time? How am I spending I need to look at my life, and if I really want to grow, I've got to examine my environment. Where and how am I spending my time? By the way, we should not, let me give you some practical advice, okay? We shouldn't take swimming lessons from a bird, and we shouldn't take flying lessons from a fish. Right? Now, there may be some that are able to do it, but they all look goofy, and there's almost certainly a better way to go about it, right? So, so why sometimes do we hang out in one environment? If you're hanging out with a fish, don't expect to learn how to fly. If you want to learn how to fly, you've got to hang out with a bird, right? If, if you want to learn, if you want to learn from, from, from somebody and gain in wisdom and understanding, if you want to be wise, you need to walk with wise people. We want to we see how they do things. We, we need to listen to how they speak, how they respond to certain situations. We need to see how they make decisions. We can't learn to be wise from foolish people. If we want to be good at managing our finances, then we need to spend time with people who, who are wise at, at, at dealing with their finances. If we want to be healthy, we need to spend time with, with people who are healthy. Don't take health advice from me. If you want to be a godly person, spend time around other godly people. Connect groups are a place where we can be around people who have the ability to apply knowledge or experience or understanding or common sense and insight to their lives. That's what wisdom means. The definition of wisdom is just that, is, is the ability to apply that knowledge or experience or common sense and insight to a situation and circumstance. We need to be around people who can, who can apply those things to, to their lives. If we want to grow in our faith, we got to get around the right people in the right environments, right? But it's not just about being in the right environment. It's about how we respond to that environment. How do we respond to the wisdom around us? Proverbs Chapter 12, verse 15 says this, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs 18, 2 says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. James 1, 19 says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. The Bible is full of scriptures that communicate this same message. 
We can be in the right environment. We can be around all the right people, have all of this wisdom around us. But if we refuse to listen, then we remain foolish. A fool, again, takes no pleasure in, in understanding but expressing his own opinion. Some of you, maybe, you're thinking of somebody right now. You say, oh, I, I, I know that person. Some of you are nudging the person next to you right now. Like, I'm sitting with that person. But maybe we ought to nudge ourselves and examine our, our own lives and say, are there areas, are there situations, are there circumstances where, where I've not opened myself up and allowed myself to listen because here's the thing I know. I know that we can hear. There's a difference between hearing and listening, right? Have you heard this old saying? It says, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Y'all know, y'all know that saying? He gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason because we should listen twice as much as we talk. That's easier said than done. You know, I, I was thinking about illustrations uh, as I was preparing this message, and I can think of a lot of stories and a lot of circumstances where other people didn't listen to me. But it was hard for me to come up with, it, with a, an illustration where I didn't listen to somebody else. And by the way, that's not because I'm a super great person, that's because I have selective memory. I'm sure there's tons of stories where, where, where people were sharing things with me and, and I was hearing, but I wasn't listening. You know, I try to think of, of, of specific stories, and I know Jacqueline, my wife, probably has thousands of them about me. But I do know that there, the, husbands, you're, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. You ever had a conversation with your wife and she was talking to you and you, you were hearing sound, but you weren't listening? You knew she was saying, somebody said amen, somebody's with me. You knew she was saying something. There was information being communicated, but you're just in your own world doing whatever we're doing. And, and, and here's the thing. Every, this, that conversation can get scary. Right? There, because if she catches on, if she sees that you're there physically but not mentally, she says, hey, did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard you, I heard, yeah, we're, I, we're good, yeah, I heard you. And then the, the scarier question is this, okay, what did I say then? You said the thing about the stuff and the place and the, yeah. Because if we're not careful, we're hearing, but we're not listening. And the, the word of God says that that's foolish, it's foolishness. When, when, when all we're interested in, when, when all we're, we're focused on is, is our own views, our own uh, opinion being accepted as right, and, and, and we're, we're, we want to be heard more than we want to hear, the Word of God says we're being foolish. But wisdom can be found in hearing others, in receiving advice and godly counsel, growing in our understanding. By the way, connect groups are a great place where we can go, we can gather with a heart to hear, to understand, and to grow. There are, I want you to know, when we say we're better together, I believe that. That there are people, when we gather in a connect group, there are people that, that God knows and God can connect me with that, that he says, they, they have the wisdom that I need for him to have. They can speak into to his life. They can encourage. They can, but we've got to put ourselves in a place to be able to receive and to hear that. Connect groups are a great place where we can gather with people who have wisdom. We can put ourselves in a situation to, to have a heart to hear, to understand, to grow. And I want to encourage you, sign up for a connect group. We don't do things here just to do them, by the way. We do things because we truly believe that this will be a benefit to you, to your marriage, to your families. And go, when you sign up for a connect group, go with a mindset that, that's saying, I'm, I'm ready to receive, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to grow. If, if you approach connect groups and, and you, you're, all, I'll sign up because pastor said to sign up, but I'm not gonna learn anything. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna help me. It's not gonna, if you go with that mindset, that attitude, guess what? You're absolutely right. But if you go and say, 
I believe that there's, there are people that are part of my church that God has called me to, connect to, and that God has positioned me in this place because he knows exactly what I need and when I need it. And he's gonna send me to the right people in the right season for, to get me the, 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 the help, the support, the, the, the wisdom that I need in this season, in this time. To be in a, a position of being willing and ready to receive wisdom from others around us. Now, sometimes that can be tough because a lot of times the things that we need to hear are not the things that we wanna hear. The things we need to hear are oftentimes not the things we want to hear. Proverbs 27, six says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Proverbs 27, nine says, oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Listen, those who truly love us, those who truly care about us, those who truly want to see God's best fulfilled in our lives are those that are willing to tell us the truth. They're willing to tell us the things that we need to hear, not just the things we want to hear. A good friend is somebody who will tell you the truth even when it hurts. Somebody who only tells you what they think that you want to hear is not being a good friend. It's not being a godly friend. Proverbs 29, verse 6, when it says that, uh, when it's talking about uh, profuse are the kisses of our enemy, that, that word profuse in the original Hebrew, it means abundantly deceitful. Yeah, what looks like kisses, what looks like an act of, of love and of affection and of tenderness is actually abundantly deceitful. They're saying what, what you want to hear and it's causing harm. It will lead to destruction. But faithful are the wounds of a friend. Again, we, we have this saying that we share around here with, with the staff and with our team. When somebody says something to us and we, we didn't want to hear it, but we needed to hear it, we say, ouch, that helps. Not ouch, that hurts. Ouch, that helps. We, well, oh, I, I didn't like it when you said this to me but I needed to hear it. And I know it's gonna help me and I trust that your heart is to see me grow, to see me thrive, to see me fully pursuing the things of God. And so I, tr I trust that feedback from you. Proverbs 20, 27, nine, when it talks about the sweetness of a friend and his earnest counsel, that word earnest comes from the Hebrew word napash. And that word means to breathe or breathe, be breathed upon, to be refreshed. In other words, when you get around somebody who's willing to tell you the truth, even when it hurts, that brings refreshing to us, right? How many of you, you know people, you've been in a situation and people are, are tiptoeing around something and you know they're being careful. And it's like, man, I just want, you, I just want somebody to tell me the truth because I, I want to be better, I want to grow, I, I want help. To be told the truth, it, it, no matter what, is refreshing. It brings, it brings life. It breathes life and, and hope. I remember when the show uh, American Idol came out and, uh, you know, everybody wanted to audition for that show. Everybody thought, this was, man, this is my chance. I've, I've gone undiscovered for my whole life. And here's my chance. I'm, I'm going to audition. This is my big break. My life will never be the same again. Millions of people thought that. Billions of people thought that. And here's the thing. Some of the people that auditioned for that show were incredibly talented, incredibly gifted, had so much ability to, to sing. They were so gifted. It was awesome. And then there were so many people that auditioned for that show that thought they were so gifted and thought they were so talented. And, they, and the problem is with many of those people, they had been told their whole life how great of a singer they were. And the truth is nobody in their life had the courage to tell them the truth. Nobody in their life loved them enough, cared enough about them to speak the truth with love and say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is not a good idea to go on national television and try to sing. And the thing about that is they end up embarrassed. 
humiliated. And even worse, some of them have been told how great they were for so long that they bought into their own hype. And, and once that happened, they now refuse to believe that they were anything but great. Have you ever tried to have an honest, open conversation with somebody and they just, they wouldn't have it because no, there's no way. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can be in that situation where we believe our own hype. We believe, we, we buy into this, this and, we, and we put ourselves in a situation where it's nearly impossible for us to grow because nobody can tell us anything. It's quiet in here right now. We need people in our lives who have the wisdom and the courage to tell us what we need to hear even when we don't like it. Even when it hurts our ego, even when it's not the popular thing to say, we need people who will speak the truth in love. We need people that will tell us things and we say, ouch, that helps. We can't just surround ourselves with people who, who tell us only what we want to hear. We need to be surrounded by people who, who have a heart and a love for us that are willing to tell us what we need to hear. Connect groups, by the way, are a great place to find those people, to invite those types of conversations into your life. By the way, don't invite everybody to those type of conversations. Part of wisdom is, is knowing who and where to seek that kind of counsel and those kind of conversations from because there are people out there that are just waiting to hurt you. You know, you tell somebody and they, they, you know, they pull their list out of their pocket, man, I'm, in, I'm so excited you asked me this question. I've been waiting to tell you everything wrong with you for years. So sit down, I hope you've got a few hours. Right, and there are people that are out there that, that, that for whatever reason will be really quick to try to hurt you, to try to put you down. To try to, I'm not talking about open yourself up to that type of conversation. I'm saying find people who you trust, who you know love you, who you know want God's best for your life and allow them, give them the space to speak freely and speak into your lives. I know my whole life, my dad has taught me to be proactive in seeking out that kind of feedback from trusted people in my life. Because if you seek it out, then you're automatically putting yourself in a position to be ready to receive it, right? When somebody just comes to you and says, hey, I, I need to tell you a bunch of things that you're doing wrong right now. You're like, whoa, I was not ready for this conversation. And those typically don't go well, right? But if you, if you welcome that feedback, if you say, hey, I just wanna check in. You know, if you're married, I think a great place to have these conversations is with, is with your husband, with your wife. Hey, I, I think I know how I'm doing right now, but I want to I, I, I want to give you permission to speak into my life and tell me, hey, how am I? Am I doing as good as I think I'm doing? Are there things that I'm struggling with? Are there ways that I that that, that I need to help you better? Is there? And we open ourselves up to that feedback, and sometimes, guess what? It hurts. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me how awesome I was. But we take that and we receive it. We put ourselves in a position to grow. When we get in a connect group, we can pray and ask the Lord to show us who are those people. I truly believe, again, there's a group for every single person here. And we can pray and we can spend time asking the Lord, seeking the Lord, saying, God, would you, would you show me who those people are, Lord? Would you, would you point me to, to the right group, oh God? You know what I need in my life in this season. You know the people, oh God, that I can invest in this season, God. Would you, would you perfectly position me and align me in a group, Lord, where, where I can receive what you need for me to receive, oh God, and I can contribute what you're asking me to contribute. Connect groups are so important because we need each other. We need each other. We are better together. We need to tap into the, the wisdom of, of those around us. You know, there are other people here that have, have been through similar things to what we're going through. There are other people who have had to navigate tough times and tough situations. There are other people who, who maybe are, 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 are further along in their walk with the Lord that we can learn, we can grow, we can, we are better together if we truly want to grow 
And we've got to recognize that we need one another. And, and one of the ways that we need each other is we need one another's wisdom. I want to invite the worship team to come forward. If we truly want to grow, then we've got to put ourselves in an environment to grow. Connect groups are a great environment for growth. We put ourselves in the right environment. If we want to grow, we need to respond to that environment in a healthy way to say, Lord, I, here I am. Lord, would you help me? Would you lead me? Would you guide me? Would you teach me? As you've invited me to be a part of this group. We need to find trusted people who love us and care about us enough to speak the truth to us in love. And when they encourage us, we need to have, have the faith and the, the, the spiritual maturity to say, ouch, that helps. I didn't want to hear this, but I needed to hear this. And now that I've heard it, I want to respond to this in a way that honors the Lord, that helps me to grow in wisdom. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be foolish. Every semester we hear testimonies of God bringing people together and, and friendships being formed and, and wisdom being shared and lives being impacted. As we gather together, we can gain through listening to other people's stories, learning from their successes, learning from failure, so that we can continue to grow as God leads us further along his plans, his pathway, his purpose for our lives. I want to encourage you over these next few weeks, pray. Ask the Lord where he would have you to plug into a connect group. Come to coffee and connect. Grab a cup of coffee. Eat a bunch of snacks. Meet a, a bunch of the connect group leaders and, and ask the Lord, Lord, where is it that you're calling me, inviting me to plug in? And then say, Lord, I, I want to make myself available, Lord, to hear from you, to learn, to grow. Lord, I need wisdom in my life. Lord, today as we read your word, Lord, I ask that you would speak to us, oh God. As we pray and we ask you, oh God, to, to help us to find that group. Lord, help to connect us to the right people in this season, oh God, to speak into our lives. To help us grow. Lord, to continue to take steps closer and closer to you, oh God, I pray that we would make a commitment to find a group, to stick with it. Lord, and to receive, Lord, whatever wisdom you want to deposit in our lives this semester, oh God, would you, would you, oh God, speak to us? Would, would we receive it? I pray that this connect group semester, oh God, that there would be transformation, oh God, in our lives. That you, oh God, through your word, through, through connecting with you, connecting with each other, oh God, and connecting with those separated from God, oh God, that, that you would do something powerful in and through our lives. Lord, I pray that we would make the effort, oh God, to prioritize getting connected in a group, oh God. I pray that we would not want to just come into church and, and, and kind of fade into the background or, or, or disappear, oh God, but that you would connect us with the right people, oh God, to encourage us and to walk alongside us, oh God, as we navigate this season of our lives, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would just continue, oh God, to do a work in us, with us, and through us as we make a commitment to build our lives upon your truth, oh God, upon your word, oh God. Lord, I pray that we would be just that, a people built by God, purpose built for this season, for this time, oh God, and that you would do a work in us, oh God, so that you could do a work through us, oh God. I pray that you would use us in this city, oh God, that you would use the people of Good Shepherd Community Church, oh God, in Brownsville, Texas, in, in the Rio Grande Valley, oh God, that you would use us, oh God, to be a light in the darkness, oh God, that you would use us, oh God, to bring glory to your name, that you would use us, oh God, to reach out to our neighbors, oh God, to see the lost saved, oh God, to see people healed and set free, discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving, oh God, that you would use us, oh God, in a mighty 
mighty way, oh God, as we surrender ourselves to you, oh God, and say your kingdom come and your will be done, oh God. Would you have your way in our lives, oh God, as we submit to you, as we submit to your plans and your purposes, oh God. I pray that as we get plugged in, we get connected, oh God, that you would do something great and mighty this semester, oh God. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I want us to do something before we leave. I just want us to make this same declaration that we made earlier. To end our service by saying, Lord, of all the voices, all the things that are fighting for my attention, all the things that are trying to speak into my life, all the different, whatever it is, the distractions, oh God, I choose to build my life on you and on you alone, oh God. I choose to find my purpose in you and you alone, oh God. I choose to, to be obedient to you and to you alone, oh God. I build my life upon you, oh God. And I pray that as we, we get into these groups and as we, we continue to grow, that our lives would continue to be built and strengthened that we would have a strong foundation to stand. I know Pastor Richard shared a few weeks ago about storms that would come, storms that would rise up. I'm praying and believing that connect groups would be part of the way that we are building a strong foundation to be sure-footed in the midst of storms, that we would have community with God, community with one another, and we could weather whatever things come our way because God is faithful, He's got us, and we're standing on His truth, we're standing on His promises, saying, Lord, come what may, I choose to trust in You. Can we stand to our feet and sing this song? I will build my life. Thank the Lord for what he's done. Amen. You can be seated for just one more moment this morning. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us today, whether you're here in person or online. We're so glad that you've joined us. If this is your very first time with us, I especially want to welcome you and say thank you so much for being here today. We're so glad that you chose to spend your Sunday 
morning with us. God bless you. And just wanted to let you know that if you go right out here to the main driveway area, Pastor George Vasquez, who is here doing the offering this morning, he'll be out there with an incredible team of, of volunteers who would love to say hi to you, to get to know you a little bit better. And then we have a special gift that we want to give to you today before you leave as well. I want to invite our ministry teams to come forward. As always, if you need prayer for anything, please don't leave this place without receiving prayer. We would love the opportunity to pray with you and pray for you. So please don't leave without receiving prayer. We'll be glad to spend some time with you this morning praying. Also, just again, a reminder, we have this week and next week is the last two weeks of our Operation Blessing School Supply Drive. So if you want to contribute to that, make sure that, that you do that uh, before the end of next week. And also, please remember, be praying for our teachers, be praying for the students, be praying for all of those who are going back to school. It's going to be a big week. It's going to be a busy week. But I believe it's going to be a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. What a blessing it's been. And we are blessed for one reason and one reason only. Why is that? To be a blessing. So go be blessed. Be a blessing. Have a great week. And we'll see you right back here next Sunday for another service. God bless you.